Welcome to an introduction to ways of thinking about education and technology. My name is Mark Johnson. I work for the Institute for Educational Cybernetics at the University of Bolton. And we've developed this six-week course to try and help you to develop thinking skills about education, which after all is such a difficult topic. Each week we're going to do an activity and this week I want to start by asking you to think of a big question about education that really interests you. This is my favourite question and um, what I want you to do is to get a big piece of paper, so a sort of A2 size bit of paper, that's f like four sheets of A4 stuck together, and just in a little bubble in the middle of the bit of paper, draw your question. So I've drawn my question there. Why is education usually rubbish? Now, you might disagree with my question. You might think, oh, no, it's not rubbish, it's great. But actually, it doesn't matter. You can choose whatever question you want. Because what I want you to think about is what frames your question. And I'm going to talk about the constraints on the way we think, the things that sort of cause us to think certain things and stop us thinking other things. And there are three types of constraint that I want you to think about. First of all, we have analysis, any kind of anything to do with logic, anything to do with um, the kinds of practical interventions that you might think we could do to address your question. So for example, if you think education is rubbish, it may be because you think we need to fund education better. So it's something logical. Beyond analysis, I want you to think about how your own experience constrains your questioning. How does your question arise from your own experience of education? Now, many people who think education is a bit rubbish actually have had fairly rubbish experiences of education. So that's a good example of, you know, what's your experience? But also, what's the common sense side of your attitude to education? And then finally, there's another kind of constraint, which is actually the constraint where we have doubts about the question and where we think about the political implications of the question. So in whose interests is, is it to say, why is education rubbish? Who might disagree with that? What doubts do you have, can you think of, about whether that's the right question to ask? Why do you have those doubts? What are the worries that you have at the back of your mind about the question? So I think these three issues can be seen as the things that sort of weigh upon us whenever we think about anything with education, because we can't think of anything without thinking about some sort of plan as to how we might improve it, analysis. We can't think of anything without thinking about some sort of experience that sits behind the concern that we have, sort of experiential common sense dimension. And we can't think of anything, even if we try not to worry about whether the question is right, there's always some aspect of critique. So on your piece of paper, I want you to draw your question and then have three bubbles coming out of the question in the same way that I've, I've got here. So this is, this is what my paper looks like. In those three bubbles, you've got your question in the middle, in those three bubbles, you can write what you think are is the experience, common sense, what your analytical proposal might be, and where you might have doubt or um, political worries, worries about you know what your question means. Don't don't think about it too much. Just throw stuff down. I'll, I've I've worked through my question of why did why is education usually rubbish, and I'll show you how I've been thinking. I haven't been particularly careful. I haven't thought for hours about filling in one bubble, but I've just gone and and let gone with the flow. Um, obviously, you need to choose your own question, and and you know, but but don't agonise about it. Now you're going to fill your sheet of paper because every bubble that you draw for experience, analysis, critique is also going to have three bubbles coming out of it for experience, analysis, critique. So everything basically collapses into the next level. So uh, you think there's some sort of experiential support for your question. Okay, look at that experiential support. What's the analytical proposal you would do about that? What's the critique? And so on. In the end, your paper should look something like my paper here, with lots and lots of bubbles. You fill the whole paper because each bubble that you draw also has three 
um, bubbles coming out of it for analysis, critique and experience. Um, you can spot my deliberate mistake here because I've not really drawn my question in the middle and I should have done, but I'm sure you can be much cleverer than that. Okay, so um, I'm going to walk you through an example of me exploring the question, why is education usually rubbish? Now, I haven't done this on paper. I've used a computer software package called Prezi, which is a kind of PowerPoint thing which does cool animations, and it's good for demonstration. Um, but actually, if you're trying to think this through, it's much better done on paper. So do yours on paper, but I'll try and illustrate what I'm wanting you to do through this presentation in Prezi. So um, just before I do that, um, just to tell you what to do once you've finished, when you finish, when you've filled the whole paper, take a good quality photograph of your bit of paper, um, good, good enough so that the writing is legible. I want you to put the photograph online somewhere, i.e. in a blog, a website, a photo sharing site, SkyDrive, any of these kind of things, Google Docs, whatever it might be, whatever you want. But do that so that you can send me a link to the photograph and I can have a look at it and feed back to you. Please do this before Sunday the 26th of January, um, by which time we'll be doing some other things, but that's, that's the um, deadline for um, doing this activity. Okay, thank you. Have fun. Okay, so here we go. Uh, I've got my question in the middle here. Now this is the Prezi software and you can see all the bubbles that come off bubbles that come off bubbles. So, but this is my question. Now, you obviously do your own question, but, you know, why is education usually rubbish? This is my question. And I've got my three lines coming off here. So the first line, I'm going up to experience and common sense. And all I'm going to say is, my experience of education hasn't been great, with a few exceptions. I did have one or two great teachers. My analytical proposal, this is my analysis, I think it's rubbish because we need better training for teachers and we need more funding. That's what I think. Now, I haven't thought very deeply about that, but that's what I think right now. My critique is, who says it's rubbish? Is it the same for everyone? In whose interests is it to say that things need improving? Now, if I think that education is rubbish, then it's in my interest for saying that. So how do I work through that? Let's just come back to the experience bubble, because I'm going to do the same thing. I've got my three arrows coming out of this experience bubble, and I'm just going to have a look at those now. So my experience of education hasn't been great. Now, Okay, so what's the sort of experience, if I turn that into a question, what's the experience that specifically uh, looks at that? Well, I can think about the lectures I had. They were terrible, a lot of them. It was just the teacher talking, everyone falling asleep. What's my proposal? Well, maybe we should stop people lecturing. Teachers should coordinate activities rather than just impart information. But what's my doubt about that? Well, some lectures are really good. What about the ones that really change people's lives? Isn't listening to a lecture an activity? Maybe it's the learner's fault for not listening. So that comes, you know, that's a deeper inspection of this problem of experience. Now let's look at a deeper inspection of my proposal that we need better training for teachers and more funding. So at the experiential level, um, just hold on for a second, at the experiential level, we can say, well, common sense tells us more money usually helps in most things, particularly if it's supported by some sort of coherent policy. But from an analytical point of view, we know we need then a coherent policy on education, backed up by proper financial provision. What's my worry about that? Well, who writes the policy? Who benefits from it? Who loses? Is this just a politician dreaming up a policy and then implementing it? So you can see there's these three dimensions to that analytical proposal. Now, if we come to my critical um, worries about the first question, who says it's rubbish, and so on, what are the three dimensions there? Well, everyone has a different opinion of education. That's my experience. But I believe I'm right. What's my analytical proposal? Well, maybe we should find a way of getting everyone to, to agree, to everyone to have a shared vision. What's my doubt about that? Well, the question is, who's right? What is it to be right? Is thinking we're right part of the problem? So that's this first level. Now, what I'm going to do now is go back to that experience question, go back to the experience bubble that came off the first one, and again, we've got another three bubbles coming off here. So what's the experience that, that talks about the lectures? 
Sometimes those lectures that I remember being very boring suddenly become meaningful 20 years later. Was it really so rubbish? So this is kind of a thinking about boring lectures, but actually saying, well, maybe boring lectures aren't such a problem. Should we analyse boredom? This is thinking analytically. Should we avoid boredom? We could look at the brain. Maybe we should do some research, some analytical research on the brain and boredom. But what's my worry about that? Maybe we need to be bored sometimes. Great things come out of boredom. Learners have to make an effort if you're going to learn something. So you can see, you can dig into this question. Now let's do the same for another one of these proposals. So this is my analytical proposal, the proposal that we should stop lecturing. And um, reflecting on that and thinking about my experience again, I think, well, some activities, learning activities are great, but some are terrible. Why can't the teacher just tell people what to do? My analytical proposal about that, well, we could analyse the best learning designs and find ways of disseminating them. You know, that's a very technical sort of thinking about activity. And then my worry about that is, well, what do we mean about this information that people are absorbing when they're either doing activities or, or just having being talked at? Where do we draw the boundary between an activity, thought and learning? What do we mean by information, for example? OK, so then we go down to the critical issue, what about great lectures? Um, so our analytical proposal for that might be we should know more about the relationship between the manner of communication and effect, the effect it has. Maybe we should take media studies more seriously. Okay. What about our experience of that? Well, charismatic leaders clearly are important. That's, that's the, you know, they, they can be good, but Hitler was charismatic. And in terms of critique and doubt, well, is this about charisma and leadership or is it about justice? Learners are in a powerless position with regard to teachers. How can we think about the ethics of education in this way? So this is, this is all coming back down to this issue of critique. Now, just thinking about the fact that everybody has a different opinion of education, I then started to think about, well, everyone thinks that they're right, or my experience of being right is a feeling of wanting to defend my identity, and it threatens me if I feel my um, rightness challenged. And there's this whole business about understanding the relationship between ego and identity and um, how that works. and. And how can a researcher who has an ego and identity investigate the nature of ego and identity in education? So you can see how these, these issues get really complex as we get, get into this. And then, of course, there's the whole issue of who's right. What is it to be right? Is thinking we're right the real problem? Is it possible to be right? Is truth possible? And then, again, our experience, our common sense says, well, everyone wants to be right. I want to be right about that. Our analytical proposal says, well, maybe we need to implement methods that pursue truth in the light of evidence. And the critique or doubt is, is naturalism, is, is a scientific study of education possible? So I'm just, just drilling down into all of these. I'm sure you get the idea now of what I'm doing. Um, so when we talk about... Um, Education, sometimes the conversations go round in circles. Maybe you think this conversation is going round in circles. Analytically, well, we need new methodologies for sharing experience. Critically, we're thinking, well, what's the grounding for those methodologies? Is anything other than a circular, a circular conversation possible? And drilling into this analytical proposal that we need better training for teachers and more funding, and looking at the experience for that, which says more money usually helps, how does that break down? Well, money incentivizes me to act in particular ways. If you pay me to do something, I'm tempted to do it. My analytical proposal is maybe we should implement proper research and monitoring of the effectiveness of funding for new practices. What's my worry about it? Well, money changes people's practice, but that doesn't mean that the practices are better. Many people are incentivized by things other than money, particularly teachers who want to make the world a better place on the whole. We look at the analytical proposal that came out of that. We need leadership. Leadership is the thing, or in my experience, leadership seems to be the thing that makes the difference in institutions. My analytical proposal should be maybe research should focus on decision making at all levels, whether you're a leader or a teacher. What's my worry about that? What about the decisions of the researcher? Who is the arbiter of the goodness of leadership? Whose success criteria are they?
So again, this, this way of thinking critically. And then of course we have these huge questions. Who writes the policy? Who benefits? Who loses? Where does the money come from? And bad policy is a real problem, that's my experience, but it's difficult to change. Analytically, you can say policy needs to be supported with proper research and thinking. It should be based on evidence. Critically, you can worry, well, who are the policy makers? What experience do they have? What education did they have? Lots of the education politicians in the UK, for example, come from very privileged educational backgrounds. They often don't have much insight into the education of poor people. So, are they the best people to write the policy? Okay, so that's what this looks like. Now, obviously, on paper, you would have the bo your bubbles would be the same size, but I hope you get the idea of this kind of web of ideas. In a sense, this is a technique for getting you to generate lots and lots of different ideas, but at each step of the way, to critique those ideas, to reflect on your experiences and to always be thinking of yes well we can solve that problem we can do we can do x y or z to to address that particular particular issue and it's not that you're looking for any one of these to be right it's that you get a sense of the dynamic and how our thinking sort of revolves around thinking about our experience thinking about logic and, and an analysis of the problem and also this critical doubt which is so important actually in terms of really um, deepening our thinking. Okay, I hope you enjoy the exercise. I look very much forward to seeing what you come up with and I'll speak to you next week. Bye-bye.